हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम शुभम फ्रॉम लर्न हब द फ्री लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन स्टडी फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री मैथ्स बायोलॉजी एब्सोल्युटली फॉर फ्री एट लर्न हब डॉट कॉम सो देन लेट्स स्टार्ट सो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स नाउ यू ऑल नो व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द स्टडी ऑफ कॉम्पाउंड योर एट चैप्टर ऑफ आई सी एस सी केमिस्ट्री क्लास टेंथ ओके इन दिस वीडियो एंड आफ्टर स्टडिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट विच आर इन योर सिलेबस ओके स्ट्रिक्टली स्टिकिंग टू योर सिलेबस आफ्टर दैट वी विल सॉल्व सम क्वेश्चन सो दैट यू वुड गेट अ होल्ड ऑन द टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन और यू वुड गेट अ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ अप्लाइंग द कॉन्सेप्ट टू सॉल्व द क्वेश्चन ओके सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट एंड लेट्स रॉक so friends as usual how the way the way we start a, studying any chapter okay like the same way we are going to also start to study this chapter as well and with the first and the foremost question that why we should study this compound hydrogen chloride okay so let me tell you some interesting applications of hydrogen chloride so that you would be convinced that oh yes now this compound is a, of a real use in our real day to day life okay so i will quickly tell you some few applications like you can see on the screen here the hydrogen chloride okay actually it exists as a gas but when we dissolve it in water it becomes a hydrochloric acid okay don't worry about this all these things we are going to study about it in very much detail okay in the chapter but for now you just you just understand that from this hydrogen chloride gas we make hydrochloric acid which you definitely would have heard okay if you haven't heard it's fine but now this hydrochloric acid you are definitely going to use it a lot a lot when you are going to go in your higher standards in your in your plus 2s in your graduation degrees whichever field you opt okay so if it is related to chemistry you are definitely going to use this hydrogen chloride a lot for making so many compounds for for performing so many tests okay now apart from this uh, apart from this huge huge use okay you can also you, you can also use hydrogen chloride for removing the rust from the iron sheets okay so very interesting right and apart from that okay one more interesting use which you can relate to your day to day life like from you, to your body is it is used as a medicine as well okay now you would be wondering how hydrogen chloride is used as a medicine right but see the hydrogen chloride okay what i told you that the hydrochloric acid how it is used for removing the rust okay hydrochloric acid is used for removing the rust of the iron same way we are going to use hydrochloric acids in the labs in the same way hydrochloric acids is prescribed by the doctors to those patients okay which are having decreased activity of the gastric juices okay now i am sure that till 10th standard you study about bio and all those things and you know about the gastric juices and all those things okay so it's very important and you all know hydrochloric acid is present in our stomach okay so because of the decreased activity and all those things they prescribe hydrochloric acid as a medicine okay so it's interesting so i hope now from all these applications you would be convinced about learning this compound so then let's start so now we are going to learn this laboratory preparation of hcl gas step by step okay in step wise manner manner and what only those things we are, which we are we are going to study in this preparation which are like in your syllabus okay strictly sticking to your syllabus so first one is setting of apparatus now also we are going to learn it in a way that yes we are actually doing this experiment okay so what we are what we are going to do in this setting of apparatus is you have to understand that which 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 instruments or which um, apparatus okay glass apparatus we are going to use for a particular experiment it's very simple you now from the diagram itself we can tell okay so i have just taken this diagram from your book itself so we are going to take a stand and then we are going to take a round bottom flask you can see here this is the round bottom flask or you can just take a flat bottom flask now here it is a flat bottom one okay so you can take a round bottom one also and then you 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 can see here there is a rubber cork okay so fitted at the top of this flask and this cork is having two holes okay from this two holes now what we are going to do we are going to put this this okay this is called as a thistle funnel okay this one so we are going to immerse this thistle funnel from this cork into the flask and we are going to dip this okay in the hydrogen chloride uh, sorry in the sulfuric acid okay now don't worry about this dipping part i'm going to tell you okay how we are going to arrange this in the precautions we will going to study but first of all we are just going to uh, immerse this or put this 
through this rubber cork this thistle funnel okay i will just write it here thistle funnel now what we are going to do is the another hole in this rubber cork we are going to connect a tube okay from this flask to a another flask type vessel okay now this vessel is having see you can see here two openings from the one in, into that one opening we are going to insert the tube which is coming from the flask okay in the in the one opening okay we are going to insert the tube which is coming from the flask and we are going to make sure that this tube is also immersed in the concentrated sulfuric acid okay which we are taking in this flask don't worry i'm going to tell you what we are going to do with this concentrated sulfuric acid later on but first of all we have to dip this okay this is very important and then the another opening okay of this flask we are going to again take a tube and then we are going to put it in a jar okay glass jar okay where we want to collect our hydrogen chloride gas now you would be saying sir all these things we have done now what's the use of all these things of taking all these apparatus and all those things now you would get to understand it one by one okay once we start actually doing this experiment okay once we go through the procedure right okay now let's actually try to carry out this experiment okay let's see the procedure so first we are going to take okay nacl in the flask okay and then we are going to pour concentrated sulfuric acid into the flask through the thistle funnel okay so see here you can see in this flask i have taken nacl and then i am pouring the concentrated sulfuric acid through this thistle funnel clear very simple and then what we have to do is simply we have to just heat the mixture okay this mixture which is here in this flask okay now see why we need to heat this is a condition okay so you need to remember the conditions okay which we are going to see so here the only condition okay or the important condition here is temperature okay so we need to heat the mixture now i will tell you about the temperature okay from what temperature or at what temperature around what temperature the reaction should be carried out okay but we have to heat the mixture and now why why we have to heat the mixture itself because once we mix this nacl with this concentrated sulfuric acid okay it will react but it will react very slowly if you are if you are not heating okay now see what is happening now we have added nacl we have added concentrated h2so4 now it will react okay now let's see the reaction what is actually happening once we understand the reaction then we then we can understand how the process is going on okay so first what 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 we have taken nacl right and concentrated h2so4 okay i'm writing here concentrated so now i have told you we are going to heat the mixture and first of all we are going to see the reactions okay when we are heating the mixture below 200 degree centigrade okay so when i'm heating it below 200 degree centigrade so what would happen is i would get this sodium hydrogen sulfate okay in a hso4 and hcl gas is released okay you can see here any from h2so4 hso4 would be used okay so what would be remaining 1h would be remaining okay and then this h and this cl would combine and form hcl okay in this way you can remember the products i i actually follow this way okay this is a simple trick to predict the products as well means according to me i always follow this trick okay but not always this works okay right so yes now this hcl gas this sodium hydrogen sulfate which would be formed it would remain here itself but hcl gas is released now this gas now you can understand see this gas now would move through this tube okay right but we will keep it for later on okay what what happens to that gas but for now we have prepared hcl gas right yes we are done it we are done but now what what would happen okay now when i would carry out this reaction okay or if i would now increase the temperature about 200 degrees celsius okay but before that let me tell you one interesting thing about this reaction this reaction is actually reversible okay so like this you know the reversible reactions okay the reactions which can take in the forward directions as well as in the backward direction so this can be the reactants and this can be the product and and vice versa all this as well this can be the products and this can be the reaction so this reaction is actually reversible okay but now see our reaction is proceeding in forward direction okay why because the hcl gas which is formed okay it's consistently being removed from this mixture okay the product mixture 
it's consistently being removed so because of this removal okay there is always a need for more formation of hcl and therefore the reaction proceeds forward clear now more about this you would study in your higher classes like for in equilibrium okay but for now it's fine to you to understand this much okay now what would happen when i would increase the temperature of now what are uh, increase the temperature more than 200 degrees celsius okay with this scenario with this scenario first it was less than 200 degrees celsius now i have increased it to more than 200 degrees celsius so now this see when i would increase it more than 200 degrees celsius what would happen is we are having this nahso4 right this hcl is gone but we are having this nahso4 still in this mixture so this nahso4 okay when i would increase the temperature okay greater than 200 degrees celsius okay so it would react with this nacl okay which is also present here right and it will react and it will form this na2so4 sodium sulfate okay na2 see na2 and then so4 so na2so4 now what is remaining h and cl right so hcl clear now again hcl gas is released so beyond this point then there is no production of hcl now this is the last this is the last step okay beyond this you we, you would we would not get hcl okay further till this would be the last reaction okay which would take place and hcl would be formed clear clear to this clear till this point okay the reactions which are taking okay first when we are keeping the temperature below 200 degrees celsius and then we are gradually increasing the temperature above 200 degrees celsius okay okay now let's see a scenario in which i am now carrying out the reaction itself at a temperature from initial point onwards which is kept above 200 degrees celsius from initial point or from initial point itself okay so what would happen now i have taken nacl okay in the flask i have taken concentrated sulfuric acid in the flask and from initial point onwards only i am i am carrying out this reaction at or at the temperature greater than 200 degrees celsius so what would happen is simply this nacl will react with h2so4 and it would simply form na2so4 okay the final product which we were getting in the previous reaction okay na2so4 and hcl we would get okay so if you would if you would balance it would be all fine so na2 so na2 then c na2 then two chlorines so here two chlorines okay and then h2so4 so you can see here here there are 2h and here it is so4 okay so i have just directly balanced it with sulfur and oxygen itself because see you cannot see so4 group anywhere else here okay so so4 here and one so4 here clear so this would be the reaction now in this reaction as well we are getting our hcl okay okay fine so till this point we are now clear with how the hcl is formed but how this hcl okay which is formed is purified now because here in this flask okay i will tell you an interesting property of hcl that it is very very, very highly soluble in water okay so in this flask if there would be some water molecules okay so our hcl gas which is being released from this reaction mixture it would just get solubilized in that water okay in that water which is present in the flask and it would form hydrochloric acid okay but we don't want hydrochloric acid okay or we don't want water okay along with our hcl gas we only want our dry hcl gas we don't want the hydrochloric acid droplets in our hcl gas okay some hydrochloric acid droplets would form obviously the rest of the hcl gas would be there but in our hcl gas now there would be some some percent of hydrochloric acid which we don't want we want our pure dry hcl okay but now for that we need to purify it because yes here the impure the the hydrochloric acid droplets are being formed and they are like traveling with along with this hcl gas but we need to now remove those so what we are doing here is we are, we are passing this hcl gas okay along with that tiny droplets of hydrochloric acid okay through this delivery tube and we are inserting this delivery tube okay directly into this concentrated sulfuric acid okay which is taken in this in this vessel now why we are doing so is because concentrated sulfuric acid is a excellent drying agent okay it would just dry off our hcl gas what is what is the meaning of drying off right you know now 
आर एच सी एल गैस इज हैविंग सम टाइनी ड्रॉपलेट्स ऑफ हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड सो इट वुड रिमूव ऑफ द वॉटर फ्रॉम आर एच सी एल गैस ओके देन अगेन आर एच सी एल गैस वुड बी ड्राई करेक्ट सो दैट्स वाई वी पास आर एच सी एल थ्रू दिस ट्यूब इन टू द कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड सो वी पास एच सी एल थ्रू द कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड ओके इज पास थ्रू द कॉन्सेंट्रेट सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड विच इज अ ड्राइंग एजेंट नाउ अदर ड्राइंग एजेंट्स आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट इट्स जस्ट फॉर योर इन्फो दस लाइक फॉस्फरस पेंटॉक्साइड एंड कैल्शियम ऑक्साइड्स बट वी डोंट यूज दैम ओके बिकॉज दे इट सेल्फ रिएक्ट विथ आर एच सी एल गैस ओके ना इफ दे वुड रिएक्ट विथ आर एच सी एल गैस दे विल नॉट ड्राई आर एच सी एल गैस वी वॉन्ट रिएजेंट विच वुड ओनली ड्राई आर एच सी एल गैस इट वोट रिएक्ट विथ इट देन ओनली आर जॉब वुड बी डन राइट क्लियर नाउ सी वॉट वी हैव डन टिल नाउ वी हैव जस्ट ड्राइड द एच सी एल गैस now how how we are dried how we are dried is we have, we have passed it through this concentrated sulfuric acid okay and you can see these bubbles these bubbles are of the hcl gas which is dried okay pure hcl gas and these bubbles now they would like come up to the surface and then they would burst we all know these things okay and here there is now the pure hcl gas now okay now this pure hcl gas is allowed to pass through this tube which we have connected to the second opening of this of this vessel and it is allowed to pass okay through this tube into a glass jar okay now see the interesting second interesting thing about hcl here okay we are going to learn how it is that it is heavier than air okay so how you could remember is if it is heavier than air so if i am having a mixture of air and mixture of air and suppose i am having hcl gas okay i'm like i'm like drawing like this okay so these red dots are air and this is hcl gas so our if our hcl gas is heavier then it would settle down okay wherever the mixture is present in whichever container it is present our hcl gas would settle down and our air okay would remain upward above the hcl gas okay like this it would remain above the hcl gas now this principle why i am telling you this much in detail because this principle is used for collection of hcl okay this is simply called as the upward displacement of air okay why see upward displacement of air air and hcl gas are like here present but uh, because hcl gas is heavier it settles down and air is displaced upward okay so what happens here also is the hcl gas okay is coming in this jar but there is also air present here okay here also there is air but now when hcl gas okay the amount of hcl gas in, would be increasing 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 what would happen this air would shift up and up and up and up okay and this air would shift upwards and then it would be pushed out of this jar okay because now here at the bottom there is hcl gas which is getting deposited or settling down okay now once the amount is increasing 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 it would push the air up 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 and this upward displacement of air is used for collection of our hcl gas okay simply what i have told you is hcl gas is heavier than the air this is the reason and we can also tell this in some other words in scientific terms that hcl gas density is more than there it is more dense than there that's why it is getting settled down simple okay so yes we have just prepared our hcl gas right we have purified it and we are now done with the preparation of hcl gas but here comes an interesting thing that how we can identify that t yes, s this is hcl gas okay so here, here there are some there are two tests which we can use to identify that a particular gas is hcl so suppose now we are preparing hcl gas right through this all this procedure which we have seen so far now i am having hcl gas in the glass jar which we have collected but now i want to test it that yes it is hcl okay i want to get i want to confirm this thing that yes it is hcl so what should i do then okay for that purpose what i would do is i would just allow this glass jar to get full okay with hcl gas okay so what happens when the jar becomes full with hcl gas you would observe white fumes okay at the jar's mouth okay white fumes like this now why is this happening okay just what 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 you have to understand is what is actually a fume okay so here fume is obtained okay where, where whenever you see a word fume it is obtained when there is condensation of vapor okay so you all know what is condensation now so vapor is getting converted into liquid right so whenever our vapor is getting converted into a liquid 
so you would observe a fume okay so here also the process is actually the same okay here also the same thing is carrying getting carried out our hcl gas okay which is here in this glass jar when it comes in contact with air okay which is above right here above this jar there is air everywhere and when this hcl gas okay molecules come in contact with the moisture present in the air okay what would happen is they would get dissolved in that water right which is present in the air water vapor we can say moisture means water vapor so they get dissolved in this water vapor present in the air and once the gas dissolves in the water it forms hydrochloric acid so this results into the formation of tiny droplets of hydrochloric acid okay and yes now when our vapor now here it is vapor right in vapor phase so when our vapors are converted into liquid now here they are getting converted into liquid right so that so at that time fume would be generated so here that's why fumes are getting generated okay clear with this point another test which is very simple which we can carry out okay is what we are what we are going what we can do is we can take a rod okay glass rod and then we can dip this dip, dip that glass rod in ammonium hydroxide okay clear so the tip of the rod would be having some ammonium hydroxide right and we are going to take this ammonium hydroxide okay towards the mouth of this jar okay see i will just make some another color ammonium hydroxide is present okay now this jar is full with hcl gas now this ammonium hydroxide one when, once once it comes in contact with our hcl okay ammonium chloride is formed and you can observe white fumes of ammonium chloride okay very interesting reaction okay if i hope you would be if if you are allowed to do this reactions you can just definitely try it otherwise it's fine you would try it in your higher standards but you do try it okay it's very interesting to see or you can just google on the youtube also you can also see the fumes which are produced of nh4cl now let let me tell you the reaction simply then you would understand this how this nh4cl is getting formed okay so simply our ammonium hydroxide is reacting with hcl okay hcl gas and see here ammonium group and then chlorine okay so this ammonium chloride right is formed ammonium chloride is formed and then hnoh it would become water this is the same this is the reaction okay which is taking place and here ammonium chlorides white fumes are formed okay interesting ha huh. so once we observe this white fumes then we can be sure that yes this is hcl gas same way once we observe the white fumes okay at the jar's mouth okay once the jar is full then also we can be sure that yes this is hcl gas because these are the two tests which are used for confirming the presence of hcl gas okay okay now lastly about this entire lab preparation is we have to just see some precautions which i have already told you simply we have to immerse the lower end of the thistle funnel okay in the concentrated sulfuric acid okay here the lower end of the thistle funnel okay in concentrated sulfuric acid firstly and the second is the delivery tube should be dipped in drying agent this thing also i have told you this delivery tube okay should be dipped in drying agent why because see if it is dipped in drying agent na then whatever hcl gas is being produced okay here along with this small droplets of hydrogen hydrochloric acid so that would be directly pushed into this sulfuric acid and the sulfuric acid then would dry it okay efficiently and then it would only let go the hcl gas molecules out from it okay so it won't let the water to get out from it okay so what would happen here there there would only be in this part there would only be the hcl gas molecules okay which are dried enough and because why see here here there cannot be water also you can see sir you can say sir that initial before taking concentrated sulfuric acid or when we are taking concentrated sulfuric acid and when we are filling this okay vessel there would be some water molecules then sir again our hcl gas molecules would be mixing mixed with this water molecules no it won't happen because see it is drying agent so it would once we have kept this concentrated sulfuric acid in this vessel it would absorb all the water molecules itself okay okay it would dry this vessel as well first and then okay now the vessel whatever remaining part is dried already okay so 
the HCl gas which is being passed through this concentrated sulfuric acid, okay, it would also be dried and only the HCl gas would be allowed to pass out of it. So, here in this portion, there would be only dry HCl gas which would be pushed out or which would move out of this of this vessel through this tube and then we would collect it. We all know these things. Okay. Okay. Now, let me tell you some interesting things about this entire lab preparation of HCl. Two interesting things. Very, very interesting. They are regarding the reactants itself. NaCl and H2SO4. Okay. So, first of all, we use sodium chloride, this metallic chloride. Okay. Because it's very cheap as compared to other metallic chloride. So, we avoid using other metallic chlorides and we use sodium chloride. Okay. And the second thing is we use sulfuric acid. Okay. We don't use some other acids like nitric acid. Okay. Why? Because sulfuric acid is non-volatile in nature. Other acids are volatile in nature. Now, I have already told you in the previous, in, in the chapter of acids basis, where we have studied about the volatile acids, non-volatile acids. Let me tell you again, a simple thing that volatile acids are those which when heated around 100 degrees Celsius or like that, okay, or at room temperature as well, they just get volatilized. They just get changed from their liquid state to vapor state. Okay. So, we cannot use this nitric acids and the acids which are volatile. Okay. Because if we use them, we are here heating the acid along with NaCl. So, our acid would also get mixed with the product, right, HCl gas. And then it would be a problem for us because we only want HCl gas. We don't want the acid molecules, okay, also with that HCl gas. Okay, we purely want our HCl gas. That's why we don't use volatile acids. And sulfuric acid being non-volatile, so it doesn't get volatilized or it doesn't get converted from its liquid state to vapor state very easily or at lower temperatures, okay. We have to heat to a higher temperature, then only sulfuric acid gets converted from its vapor state to the liquid state to vapor state, sorry. Okay, so that's why we can use it here because we are heating it at uh, com comparatively or considerably a higher temperature like 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, but a sulfuric acid can, yes, it can just go through that temperature. It can just hold that temperature and will not allow itself to get volatilized. Okay, because its property is, it's, it's, it's having high boiling point. Clear? Clear with this point? Okay, now moving on to the next topic. This is a very simple topic, very interesting topic. I have told you that we are going to study the experiment, okay, to demonstrate the density of hydrogen chloride gas, okay, that the density of hydrogen chloride gas is greater than the air, okay. So, we are going to prove this thing with the help of an experiment and we are going to study this experiment, okay, how we come to know that, yes, density of HCl gas is more than air. So, what we are going to do is simply, very simple, we are going to take a glass jar, okay, and then I'm going to light a candle in it, okay, just like you, maybe you would be lighting for the birthdays and all those things. So, after taking a jar and lighting a candle, I'm going to pour, okay, HCl gas, okay, into this glass jar. So, I would allow HCl gas, okay, to enter this glass jar. Glass jar. Now, what would happen is the observation, okay, this is the simple procedure, okay, pouring HCl gas into the glass jar, having burning candle, okay. Now, we observe that our candle goes off, it extinguishes, okay. Now, this is an interesting thing. Why, why is it happening? We all know that when the candle goes off, when the fuel is over, okay, means if our wax in the candle is over or if the oxygen which is responsible or which is supporting the combustion is, is not present at that moment, okay, is not present there. So, here we can see the candle is fine, okay, wax is fine, but then the second part is the supporter of combustion, oxygen. Here, the candle, okay, here, it is not getting enough oxygen so that it would continue burning. And what is happening with that oxygen? Why isn't it getting the oxygen when we are pouring HCl gas? Because our HCl gas, okay, we can, we can then just go, conclude to that point that maybe, okay, or we can conclude that point or we can understand from this that HCl gas is heavier than the air. That's why what it is doing is actually, see, I will tell you here, when we are pouring it, okay, so it would just go down to the bottom, it would settle at the bottom and the air, which I have already told you, right, the air which is present in the bottom, okay, it would push this air out of this jar because it is heavier than the air, 
okay that's the reason it would just accumulate 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 and settle at the bottom 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 and once it reaches this level once it is full okay once the jar is full of hcl a candle would it's obvious it would ext extinguish because now here there is no air present no air means no oxygen all the air is being pushed out by this hcl out okay because hcl is going and settling down at the bottom and this means that our hcl is denser than the air that's why it is going below the air it's settling at the bottom okay so i have told you now what is happening actually and why our candle is extinguishing and the inference also you have then then we would come to know that yes our hcl is that's why our, that's why our hcl is heavier than the air okay or we can say that it's denser than air its density okay is greater than air now one more interesting thing which you can infer from this experiment is see once the jar is full with hcl our candle is getting extinguished so this means that hcl is neither combustible gas okay we cannot use hcl as a fuel to burn right also hcl neither supports okay nor it supports combustion like oxygen okay because when hcl gas is there in the jar our candle is getting extinguished okay so neither hcl is playing the role of a combustible gas nor it is playing a role of support role to support a combustion now moving ahead to another ex interesting experiment fountain experiment okay the name of the experiment experiment itself is very interesting right now what we are going to study in this is this experiment will help us understand that how our hydrogen chloride gas is highly soluble in water okay so for that first we are going to go through this setting of apparatus okay setting of apparatus thing so we need a stand then we are going to take a round bottom flask see here but now here we are going to place this round bottom flask inverted okay and we are going to fix a rubber cork right see here which is having two holes in it okay from one hole we are going to pass a jet tube okay which would which which is also dipped in this blue litmus solution okay which is in this beaker the other hole is used because we are inserting a dropper okay inside this round bottom flask and one more interesting thing this round bottom flask okay the most important thing not interesting but most important thing that this round bottom flask is full of dry hcl gas okay dry so this thing i have told you jet tube dropper lutein solution and yes now this is the observation we will go to go to, go to it but yes one more important thing that this dropper okay it's having water in it right now this is very critical we are going to use this dropper itself for carrying out the reaction clear okay now let's see the procedure only one simple thing we have to do is just we have to press the dropper okay so now i am pressing this dropper so now what happens is we can observe the observation is blue litmus solution would pass through the jet tube okay you can see here this blue litmus solution would pass through this jet tube right in this way and it would form a red fountain in the flask okay so i am pretty sure that it would be very exciting and very interesting to see this experiment okay like really so you would observe a red fountain here that's the observation now let's see why is this happening why we are why we are able to see this red fountain okay so what happens is when we are pressing the dropper okay there is water in the dropper right so water would come out in the flask see here water would come out in the flask and we know that in flask there is dry hcl gas so we have already studied in the preparation of hcl gas in lab preparation i have already told you that hcl gas is highly soluble in water and what this experiment is trying to tell us is exactly the same thing hcl gas is highly soluble in water so what hcl gas does is hcl just gets solubilized in this water okay and it forms hydrochloric acid clear so since it is highly soluble in water it dissolves and forms hydrochloric acid now what happens is see if our hcl gas is now getting dissolved and forming hydrochloric acid so this means that the amount of hcl gas here is getting reduced right in this round bottom flask which is tightly fitted with a cork so this means that the pressure inside the flask would reduce right we all know that if if the gas is if the gas is getting less and less right in this flask so this means that the pressure in the flask is getting less and less okay and you know that when the pressure is getting less and less what would happen okay here it is here there is a jet tube okay whose opening right here 
it's the opening of the jet tube okay now since the pressure is getting low and low here it would start sucking the it would start suck, sucking this blue litmus solution okay here there is low pressure so this atmospheric pressure would now push this okay here low pressure as compared to the atmospheric pressure okay so what would happen atmospheric pressure would press this blue litmus solution and it would make this blue litmus solution to pass on through this jet tube okay and now we know that see since this blue litmus solution once it reaches the tip of the jet tube it would come in contact with hcl gas here right which is present here and we know the nature of hcl gas okay if you don't know i will tell you it's acidic in nature okay so we know that one simple thing blue litmus solution okay when it comes in contact with an acid or a substance having acidic nature it would turn red right we have studied this in acid bases and salts so that's the reason our blue litmus solution once it comes in contact with acidic hcl gas it turns red and we can see this beautiful red fountain okay interesting so lastly what we have to learn about this experiment is the inference okay what we can understand from this experiment is simply our hcl gas is highly soluble in water okay how we can how we can justify this because we know that this overall thing is happening because something is reacting or something is happening inside this round bottom flask and that thing whatever is happening it is reducing the pressure inside this that's why our blue litmus solution is entering this jet tube that's why our that's why the air is pushing this okay blue litmus solution into the jet tube so since air is pushing this blue litmus solution in the jet tube this means that there is something which is causing the lowering of pressure here and what would cause the lowering of pressure okay here the entire flask is filled with hcl gas so something is happening something is something wrong is happening with the hcl gas okay i'm just joking so what is happening is actually hcl gas amount is getting decreased that's that's the only way the pressure would get decreased here okay so how the amount would get decreased then so this means that it is getting dissolved in water okay because when we are pressing the dropper okay some water is coming out and that water is reacting with hcl gas so we can say that with small amount of water at as well our hcl gas is dissolving that means that it is highly soluble in water okay very interesting okay now let's move on to the last experiment okay or the last experiment like thing which we are going to study for this chapter that is lab preparation of hydrochloric acid okay now first of all let me tell you hydrochloric acid okay what what does this mean simply the saturated or the aqueous solution forget about saturated but aqueous solution of hcl gas okay is called hydrochloric acid now what does this mean okay we know aqueous word whenever it is used in front of solution this means that the solvent is water h2o our favorite solvent now there is a solution of hcl gas with water okay so this means that our hcl gas is a solute okay so solution of hcl gas okay okay which is having water as a solvent when we call and and this solution okay not when and this and this solution is called as hydrochloric acid clear with this part so what is hydrochloric acid now we are going to prepare the hydrochloric acid now i have already told you how to prepare it just from this process only we need to just simply let this hcl gas okay get dissolved in our water but now it's not that easy as you are thinking okay just taking hcl gas and then dissolving it because we are doing it at in a lab right so we need to understand the conditions we need to follow the proper conditions otherwise there would be a great havoc okay i will tell you the interesting thing about this experiment if you want to proper it if you want perform it uh, properly then what things can be happened okay you would end up with a doom explosion so let's start with the setting of apparatus first of all now this apparatus okay is having a inverted funnel arrangement so what we are going to do is now i am going to take a, a tube okay glass tube and what i am going to do is i am going to connect this glass tube okay at one end to this generating flask this is the flask this is the exactly same flask okay which we have used for preparation of hcl gas so here i have taken hydro uh, concentrated sulfuric acid okay from thistle funnel i have added sodium chloride i have heated okay i am heating it okay below 200 degrees celsius or about 200 degrees celsius whatever i feel okay but i would always prefer below 200 degrees celsius okay so 
because there are some problem with about 200 uses not let's not get into that but now here what i'm going to do, what i'm doing is actually here sodium chloride is reacting with sulfuric acid i'm making them react by heating them okay and we have studied what would generate here hcl gas so simply i have connected this tube with a source of hcl gas okay this is the generate generating flask now why i'm telling you in this detail because we are going to see the repercussions if we don't use this type of arrangement okay at the last but now for now i'm just connecting this tube with this generating flask and then the other end of this tube okay i'm having a funnel okay in this way okay don't worry about the proportion of this diagram i'm not a artist so what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect a funnel which is inverted okay to this tube and i'm going to place this funnel okay or i'm going to just place this funnel in such a way that it just touches the surface of the water okay in a trough or water trough or water beaker big beaker whatever you can take but it should just touch the surface of the water just it should touch okay this is very important okay now this is the arrangement this is this is very important quite important because they have asked several times in your exams also okay means they have asked okay not several times but they have asked in your exams okay this question so now let's see ahead okay what is the procedure okay so again ha huh, i will here make the delivery tube i will connect it with a funnel and then i am going to just arrange this funnel in such a way that it just touches the surface of the water now procedure is actually taking place what is happening here is hcl gas is getting generated and directly the generated hcl gas we are allowing to allowing it to pass through this tube come to this funnel part and then here there is water right so our hcl gas is readily getting dissolved in this water and what would form what what would form hcl okay when it dissolves in water okay we have just now seen it would be hydrochloric acid the product would be hydrochloric acid the aqueous solution of hcl gas but the interesting thing here is okay this method in this procedure what is happening let me tell you in detail here okay when hcl gas is coming in this funnel okay like this some of the hcl gas molecules are like dissolving in this water right so again the same thing here the amount of hcl gas would get reduced like see like this way the amount of hcl gas would get reduced okay now this has dissolved in water now again the atmospheric pressure okay is high and the pressure inside the delivery tube okay and this funnel okay and this entire apparatus would be low correct so again the same thing would happen our atmospheric pressure or the air then would push oh, sorry our air would then push this water okay inside this funnel correct because now it needs to balance the pressure so once the water is pushed it just goes inside this funnel but we know that what precaution we have taken is we have just touched the surface of the water with the funnel okay the the surface the tip of the funnel okay is just touching the surface of the water so once water enters this funnel okay suppose this much water is has been entered okay now you can imagine okay here the water level would fall right like in this way because some water is getting inside right so water level would fall simply the simple logic which we all know now once the water level falls what would happen again there there would be an air gap right this is the air gap between the funnel okay which is having the water and this water which is in the trough now because of this air gap what would again happen see this air is like rarer than water right it is less dense than water so it would now again get inside the funnel and it would make this water to come back to fall down okay so this process is happening and now this water okay will again fall down okay again it will fall down again the level would be same as that of the 
would, would reach the same level okay and slowly and gradually the level of water would also slightly would, would increase slightly okay not much but slightly it would increase because HCl gas is continuously getting dissolved now so that's why the volume would increase but that's not our point again the water would come to the original level but now this time now to this level okay now this time there is some HCl gas molecules which have been dissolved right okay so we are now we have now got, got some okay some hydrochloric acid solution so in this way these steps are repeating again and again this thing ha happens again and again because now again the HCl gas would dissolve here okay again the pressure would lower inside again the air would be pushed inside the funnel again there would be an air gap again the water would fall down and this process continues okay till till the point where we feel that okay now no more HCl gas is getting dissolved in the water are this are this solution of HCl okay or our hydrochloric acid is now saturated now no more no more HCl gas is getting solubilized okay then we would stop this process and we would get our final product okay which is this hydrochloric acid now this final product one interesting thing about it is it it is concentrated okay quite concentrated because now it's saturated right so no more HCl gas would get dissolved so it is quite concentrated and the composition you can remember it's 36 percent HCl by mass okay so if you are if you are taking 100 grams of this hydrochloric acid so you would find 36 grams HCl in it and 64 grams water in it this is the meaning of it clear so what we have studied how the process is taking place okay how this inverted funnel arrangement okay is helping us to dissolve the HCl gas and we are getting the hydrochloric acid okay okay so now if you would think a bit okay a bit so you can just you the, a question can arise in your mind sir why actually you are saying in one way that we are have we have connected this delivery tube to a generating flask okay and you are saying in other terms as well that here the amount of HCl gas is getting reduced but how is it possible sir okay because if the HCl gas is getting generated okay if at all here the HCl gas molecules would become less because they are dissolving the new HCl gas molecules would come here okay they would replace here them but then why you are saying that here the amount of HCl gas is getting reduced okay and that's the reason the pressure is getting reduced and water is entering this funnel and all those things why why is this so because see if the rate of formation of HCl okay here there is some speed with which the HCl gas molecules are formed simply rate means the speed with which the HCl gas molecules are formed okay if the speed with which HCl gas molecules are formed okay is matching with the speed with which the HCl gas molecules are getting dissolved in water then only if suppose three molecules or four molecules are getting dissolved okay four molecules would take their place okay if the speed is matching but here the thing which is happening here is the speed is not matching the rate of formation okay the speed of formation of HCl is less than the rate of dissolution of HCl gas okay HCl gas so if suppose here four molecules are getting dissolved only two molecules are replacing their place okay so what would happen then the net would be reduction in the amount and that's why since there is a reduction in the amount of HCl the net effect is reduction in the amount of HCl that's why we all know now the same thing that the pressure is less here outside pressure is more the water is getting pushed inside okay this is the reason why water is getting pushed inside clear now before telling you the importance of this inverted funnel arrangement okay let's have a look on the direct absorption okay which means the process in which we are not using inverted funnel arrangement okay we are directly making the HCl absorb how so I'm just simply taking a delivery this delivery tube and the same delivery tube I'm allowing it to touch the surface of the water okay where I want my HCl where I want my hydrochloric acid to be generated okay in this water trough so what would happen the same process would take place here the speed of formation is less okay of formation of HCl here the speed of the dissolution of HCl is more as compared to the speed of formation of HCl so again there would be the net decrease in the amount of HCl because of which there would be less pressure same logic less pressure means the air here would push the water inside this delivery tube again but now 
since the delivery tubes volume is so less you can see okay the funnels volume was quite a big right so if at all the air was pushing the water okay the water need what what water it it needed some space okay it needed more space here in this funnel okay to fill the entire inverted funnel and then reach this delivery tube end okay but here the space is absolutely less so once air pushes this water it would just quickly enter into this delivery tube okay it would enter it would just pass through this delivery tube more quickly than this funnel okay here it wo it would take more time to reach the delivery tube and then to reach the generating flask okay which is there but here it would quickly fill up the delivery tube because the volume is less as compared to the funnel and since it it would quickly fill okay before there would be an air gap maybe the water would have reached our generating flask okay and now this would create a very great problem to us because first of all the reaction would stop okay once water en enters into the generating flask secondly there would be a doom explosion okay now why is this so we all know a simple logic when water is added to huge amount of acid what happens water acid reaction is exothermic and a huge amount of heat would be produced but now here there are so many acid molecules right there are no water molecules which would absorb those which would absorb that heat so if there is no one to absorb the heat so this heat would be evolving a large amount of heat would be evolving and it it may result in explosion right and this is actually happening here water is getting added into the acid okay not acid is getting added into the water small amount of water is getting added into the acid okay same thing so here also there would be an explosion so that's the reason we don't use this direct absorption method or without inverted funnel arrangement if we want to use it let me tell you an interesting thing if you are now not left with any option you have only this delivery tube so what you can simply do is you can just connect like this a flask okay the same round bottom flask or any other flask between this generating flask and this water trough so in case if this back suction occurs which i have told you okay this entire process i have told you this is back suction okay and in case okay if i haven't if i haven't told you you just uh, you just now now you you have come to know that yes this is back suction okay the back suction means water is entering the delivery tube and it is directly going into the generating flask this is called back suction okay this entire thing if i would summarize this entire process it is called as back suction and if if you want to avoid this back suction and we are not having any inverted funnel then we can arrange or we can take a, another flask we can just attach it between the generating flask and the water trough and what would happen is if at all the water enters the delivery tube okay it won't reach the generating flask it has to fill first this flask okay so our so so the entrance of water in the generating flask would be avoided and the accident would be avoided okay which is very dangerous clear now now you would have understood the importance of this inverted funnel arrangement okay so what it is actually doing is it is providing a large surface area okay so water which is getting sucked here okay once it reaches this funnel okay to a small extent itself okay or once it reaches this funnel okay very quickly the air gap is being produced and water falls down which is not happening in case of this delivery tube okay only the single simple tube small tube so that's why this arrangement is not allowing the water to enter the delivery tube to that extent that it would reach the generating flask and our back suction is avoided okay and the next is it also provides large surface area for the absorption of hcl gas so that hcl gas would get absorbed very nicely okay very effectively or at a faster rate as well okay no problem with the surface no problem with the absorption of hcl gas for us okay now in our syllabus we have to only study one reaction for the hcl gas okay you heard heard it right i i hope because only one for hcl gas we are going to study lot lots of reactions for hydrochloric acid okay so the reaction is very simple very interesting to observe as well you can also watch that reaction on youtube as well okay if we are taking okay hcl gas and we are allowing it to react with ammonia gas okay so you would be surprised to know that we would get a product which is not a gas but it is a solid okay and the product is ammonium chloride okay which is solid okay see nh3 
देन वन एच एन एच फोर सी एल ओके एन एच फोर सी एल दिस प्रोडक्ट सो यू वुड ऑब्जर्व वाइट डेंस फ्यूम्स ओके ऑफ आमोनियम क्लोराइड सो इट्स वेरी ब्यूटिफुल टू सी दिस रिएक्शन now let's quickly see the reactions okay of hydrochloric acid so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just simply write a general reaction and then i'm going to take a simple example so that you would be able to write the equations as well chemical equations as well correctly so acidic properties okay are shown by the hydrochloric acid and we are going to study its acidic properties one by one okay by the action of first the action of hydrochloric acid on metals okay now you have to remember this thing that hydrochloric acid only acts on those metals or reacts with only those metals who are above the hydrogen okay above hydrogen in the electrochemical series now i'm sure that you would have studied about the electrochemical series in electrolysis okay we have studied it i have also told tell you told i have also means gave you a trick to remember the electrochemical series as well okay so just let me tell you which elements are there above the electrochemical series okay so starting from potassium then calcium then sodium magnesium aluminum okay zinc iron nickel tin lead hydrogen and then below hydrogen cu hg ag gold platinum okay so this is the electrochemical series now you can figure out these all the elements all the metals sorry all the metals above hydrogen hydrochloric acid would react with all of them okay but below the hydrogen it won't react so any any one example suppose i am taking up i am taking zinc okay my favorite one so zinc plus hcl now what it would give me okay on action of on action of hydrochloric acid on metals okay we get metallic chlorides and hydrogen gas is evolved okay so what you need to do is in your exams also you just need to for preparing for preparing for your exams for for remembering the reactions you first remember the word reaction okay the simple general reaction okay not word means not zinc plus hcl gives zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas this this doesn't work what it would work what would work for you is this general reactions once you know the general reactions once you know which reactants can react that's it then you can make up the reaction on your own okay so zinc plus hcl now we know metallic chlorides would form so zinc chloride would form right zinc chloride so zinc chloride this zncl2 zinc chloride is formed okay and h2 gas is released okay now you can just balance it i won't balance the reactions here because it's very simple okay we won't waste our time in balancing the reactions first it was metals now our hcl would pick up metal oxides now it's not happy with metals just metals it needs much more fun so it would take metal oxides then now what would happen when our hcl would react with metal oxides it would it would form salt okay metallic salt now here metallic salt would be metallic chloride okay simply same metallic chloride metallic salt or metallic chloride and water okay salt and water now how you would remember see metal oxides are mostly basic in nature okay so now we know that our hcl is acidic okay and we have studied the reaction of acid and base gives us salt and water that's the logic simple logic so i'm taking metallic oxides now any one oxide my favorite one is sodium like this na2o okay or yeah fine it's fine na2o then i would take hcl okay now i would i know that metallic salt or metallic chloride is going to form so sodium chloride is going to be formed okay so i'm here just balancing it okay see na 2na 2cl okay so 2na cl and then h2o clear okay so 2na cl and then water so like this you can write the reaction for other metal oxides as well now lastly it's not still happy with metal oxides now it wants much more fun then it is also reacting with metallic hydroxides okay you can say them the brother of metal oxides only you need to push one hydrogen in them okay it's not that simple i'm just joking so i'm taking sodium hydroxide okay now this reaction you would be like it would be on your tips hcl plus naoh 
what it would give, right? NaCl plus H2O. Now here also the same logic, our metallic hydroxides are basic in nature, the same way and HCl is acid, so it would also give us salt and water, okay? So you can just write in the general reaction, oxides or hydroxides, okay? Metallic oxides or hydroxides, when they react with HCl, they form metallic salts and water. So this is the general reaction for both of them, okay? Now we are done with the reaction of HCl with metal, metal oxides and metal hydroxides. Now moving ahead to metal carbonates and metal hydrogen carbonates, okay? So this metal, okay, carbonates, or I'm just writing short form hydrogen carbonates. Okay, when they react with HCl, okay, the general reaction is they would also form chloride. Okay, so metallic chloride. Now I'm writing the short form. Okay, you can write the full form on your own. And it would also give us free in gift water and very important carbon dioxide. Okay, carbon dioxide gas is released. So now any example would work here means like for sodium carbonate or I'm taking sodium hydrogen carbonate and I'm allowing it to react with our hydrochloric acid because still it's not happy. Okay, it wants to react with more and more and more reagents. So yes, it is reacting with carbonates. It's reacting with, see carbonates, it, it's reacting with hydrogen carbonate and what it would form chloride. So metallic chloride, right? So sodium chloride would be formed here and here also sodium chloride. Okay. And along with it, we know water and carbon dioxide, as simple as that. Okay. Now you balance this reaction on your own, that's fine. Now moving ahead to the, this was the fourth one, moving ahead to metal sulfites. Okay, sulfites, F-I-T-E, P-H-I-T-E-S. So their formula is like this, okay metal and then SO3. Okay, now based on the valency of the metal, you can just make the correct formula. So SO3 group is there. Okay, here it was CO3 group, here it was HCO3 group in hydrogen carbonates. In sulfides, it is SO3 group. Okay, when they react with HCl, okay, the product is similar to that of this carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. It would also form metal chloride. Okay, metal chloride, sorry, metal chloride. The short form I'm writing here, okay, metal chlorides. And then water would be formed, but now in place of carbon dioxide, it would be sulfur dioxide gas, which would be released. Okay. Now again, any example would work. Um, I, I would take a simple example, not any example. Okay. I would take a simple example for this type of reaction. I'm taking Na2SO3. Okay. Because SO3 has two minus charge. Okay. SO3, two minus charge. Okay. So two Na plus would be requiring. Okay. So two plus two minus, okay, so Na2SO3, and then HCl, so what would form, what would be formed, NaCl, okay, metallic chloride, NaCl, and then H2O and SO2 gas would be released. Okay, you balance it on your own, that's very easy. And then lastly, the acidic properties, last reaction. Now, like, we have to just remember, we have to just study this much only reactions for the acidic property, because as per, like, Truly speaking, HCl won't get satisfied, okay? It would react and react and react and react. But here, till this point only, we have to study the reactions for the acid properties, which is last one is metal sulfides, okay? And the interesting thing is most of these reactions we have already studied in acids basis, okay? The chemical properties of acids, most of the reactions we have already covered. So metal sulfides, when they are reacting with HCl, okay? So it would form, again, the same metallic chlorides, Okay, and here rotten egg smell gas would be released. Now you would be relating it, hydrogen sulfide gas. Okay, you have to remember it. So I'm taking sodium sulfide. Okay, sulfide is having S2 minus, okay, anion. Okay, and metal cation. So S2 minus 2 Na plus, 2 plus 2 minus. So Na2 S HCl, again metallic chloride, which means NaCl. Okay, NaCl and hydrogen sulfide gas is released. Balance this also and your work is done. Okay, now moving ahead to an interesting reaction. Okay, now in this reaction, we are going to take manganese dioxide. Okay, this MnO2 is manganese dioxide. 
and here the reaction is taking place okay of manganese dioxide with concentrated hcl okay not dilute concentrated hcl and when we are heating this manganese dioxide and concentrated hcl what we get is manganese chloride okay chlorine gas and free we get water okay for free i'm just joking so now here what is actually happening here is oxidation and reduction reaction is taking place simultaneously okay how now see here our manganese dioxide okay in terms of simple hydrogen oxygen gain and loss terms okay which of oxidation and reduction reaction okay means the oxidation and reduction reaction definitions in terms of loss or gain of hydrogen and oxygen i am talking about okay which is we all know that oxidation means right loss of hydrogen or gain of oxygen same way reduction means okay in terms of hydrogen oxygen loss and gain reduction means loss of oxygen okay or gain of hydrogen so you can see here clearly our mno2 okay it's losing the oxygen and it's becoming mncl2 okay so losing oxygen means it is getting reduced okay reduction is taking place in the same way our hydrogen chloride our hydrogen chloride okay sorry hydrochloric acid not hydrogen chloride hydrochloric acid concentrated hydrochloric acid see here hcl is getting converted into the cl2 okay so it is losing hydrogen losing hydrogen means again see losing hydrogen means loss of loss of hydrogen means oxidation okay so it is getting oxidized okay what is getting oxidized hcl is getting oxidized mno2 is getting reduced okay now in this way you have to remember now one more interesting thing okay i have told you okay in whenever we have studied redox reaction in some chapter whenever you see a species which is getting reduced okay if it is getting reduced itself then it means that it is oxidizing the other species okay so this is getting reduced mno2 is getting reduced this means that it is oxidizing our hcl and if it is oxidizing hcl that means it is behaving as oxidizing agent okay mno2 same way if a species is getting oxidized okay it is getting oxidized itself okay then that means it is reducing the other species okay it is reducing okay here it is oxidizing so it is reducing the other species okay here it is behaving as oxidizing agent it will be behaving as reducing agent. so itself getting oxidized it means it would reduce the other if it is reducing other it means it is behaving as reducing agent okay so here it is getting oxidized hcl so it is reducing the other one mno2 and hence okay it is behaving as a reducing agent what hcl okay so this thing you have to just remember the reactants the products which are formed okay condition we have to heat third thing and lastly what is getting oxidized what is getting reduced and based on this what is getting oxidized and what is getting reduced you can figure out which is an oxidizing agent out of them and which is a reducing agent out of them okay okay now don't worry we are at the end of the reactions and as well as the end of the chapter as well so the last reactions are the precipitation reaction now why precipitation because precipitates are now going to form okay now we all know about the precipitates we have studied a lot about them okay in the fourth chapter right analytical chemistry so here again we are coming back to the dilute hydrochloric acid so very interesting thing is dilute hydrochloric acids okay they do not react with nitrates okay normally normally but there is an exception here dilute hydrochloric acid okay they react with lead and silver nitrate okay and yes this reactions with the reactions with lead nitrate and silver nitrate with dilute hydrochloric acid we are going to study now okay so starting with lead nitrate reaction okay very easy to understand so this lead nitrate okay pb no3 twice now i don't need to tell you this formula no3 nitrate ion minus 1 lead is in its plus 2 state okay so 2 plus so it would need 2 minus right 2 no3 ions so 2 no3 ions and 2 plus okay so 2 minus and 2 plus lead nitrate once when when it reacts with hcl okay dilute one so it would give us again the chloride okay lead chloride so here it is in 2 plus state okay so you have to use your brain since lead is it lead here is in 2 plus state okay 
it would require two chlor if it is forming a chloride it would require two chloride ions right in order to satisfy the charges 2 plus 2 minus so pb cl2 okay so this is the lead chloride which would be formed okay and along with the lead chloride nitric acid is formed okay see lead chloride and nitric acid hno3 now you balance this reaction on your own that's very simple and this lead chloride is a precipitate okay this whose color is white okay and interesting thing about this precipitate is when we further heat okay we allow the reaction to take place and if we heat further okay this precipitate would dissolve now very important this is this has been asked in your exam okay this precipitate dissolves and we would observe clear solution so once precipitate would dissolve we know there is nothing in the solution the solution would appear as appear clear to us when it would dissolve when we heat when we heat further okay now next is silver nitrate so in case of silver nitrate okay here it would also react with dilute hydrochloric acid and how it would react it would form same chloride okay so silver chloride silver okay chloride and then what is remaining h and no3 it would form hno3 okay so in this way also you can remember the reaction so silver chloride and hno3 now you would be you had figured out this silver chloride is the precipitate okay and yes its color is also white but it's curdy white okay just like the curd so curdy white in color now interesting thing about this precipitate is since this one dissolves on heating this precipitate okay when we add nitric acid into it it is insoluble okay it remains as it is but when we add ammonium hydroxide okay ammonium hydroxide in it it is soluble okay we get a clear solution now what actually happens in this case is let's let's try to understand see i'm taking this silver chloride i'm adding ammonium hydroxide okay how the precipitate is getting solubilized okay here the complex salt is formed okay which is this diamine silver okay diamine silver one chloride oh, wait a minute silver one chloride this is the name of the salt yes this is here chloride don't worry about the formation of this you can just remember it no need to go into the details once you get into your plus 2 you would definitely learn about this in coordination compounds how how you have to write the name and all those things you just remember it for now for sim for, for for simplicity you can just remember di c2 amine a m m i n e then silver okay so di amine silver reverse and then one is the oxidation state of the silver in this complex okay so no need to understand this thing right now okay and then chloride okay so this is the name simply you just remember it for now so this complex salt is formed along with water and this complex salt okay this due to this formation of complex salt this ppt gets dissolved and we get a clear solution okay we this ppt gets dissolved okay just no need to remember the no need no need to go into the color and all of all of that solution just remember that the ppt dissolves in this way because of the formation of this complex salt okay now one more interesting thing is this reaction okay the reaction of silver nitrate with hcl is used as a test for hydrochloric acid okay because we get this curdy white precipitate okay which is soluble in ammonium hydroxide insoluble in nitric acid so we have so many uh, identification tests ahead also so that we can reconfirm that yes it's definitely the hydrochloric acid okay clear with this part okay then friends now let's quickly solve some questions so i have deliberately taken the questions which have been asked in your py previous year exams okay so you can see the year of the exam in which they, they have been asked so let's jump on to the question now what you can do is i would prefer you I, i would advise you to just pause the video here you can just read the entire question okay if if the question is not visible to you okay so you can just you can just i, I would just get away from this you can just read the question and then you try to solve it on your own and then you just resume back to check the answer whether it is right or wrong and i'm sure that once you have once you have learned through this video once you have gone through the chapter as well after reading after after 
just going through this video once you go through the chapter as well in from your book you would definitely you would be definitely able to solve these questions okay so very simple simple questions they have been asked some questions are like a bit tricky as well okay not all these questions are simple so first is name the acid used for the preparation of hydrogen chloride gas in the lab okay in laboratory so we know which acid it is concentrated sulfuric acid right which is used for the preparation of hydrogen chloride gas in the lab right so, and next is why is this particular acid preferred to other acids why sulfuric acid is preferred now we have also studied this because sulfuric acid is non volatile right other acids are volatile and we need non volatile acid so that our acid won't move along with the hydrogen chloride gas which we are which we are supposed to prepare right so for, for writing the answers in the exam you can just write in single single lines the first is concentrated sulfuric acid and then you can just write since the sulfuric acid is non volatile that's why we are using it as uh, preferred to the other acids simply okay so in this way in simple one one line you can you have to answer the question because these are one one marker questions okay one uh, one mark and then two mark so this is a two mark question but they are expecting you but they are expecting from you just a one liner answer okay that's enough for them to give you the full marks right ha huh. next is second write the balanced chemical equation for the lab preparation of hydrogen chloride gas okay so we have studied the balanced chemical equation right which is when when we are carrying out the reaction at the temperature less than 200 degree celsius okay so we know the reagents which is nacl and sulfuric acid concentrated sulfuric acid and below 200 degree celsius when we carry out we know we get sodium hydrogen sulfate and hcl gas is released okay so you can just balance this reaction and your job is done because they need a balanced chemical equation okay clear with this part okay next questions for the prep of preparation of hydrochloric acid in lab okay first why is direct absorption of hydrogen chloride gas in water not feasible okay so we have already studied about this thing why is it not feasible because when we would carry this direct absorption okay back suction would occur and because of the back suction we know reaction would stop and explosion would take place right so simply back suction would take place you can write in single line then now in order to write the answer you need to have conceptual clarity okay then you can just simply write the answers second is what arrangement is done to dissolve hydrogen chloride gas in water okay so which arrangement we do inverted funnel arrangement as simple as that so just one word answers and your job is done okay okay moving to the next question write a balanced chemical equation okay action of dilute hydrochloric acid on magnesium sulfite okay so magnesium sulfite cso3 2 minus mg2 plus okay 2 plus 2 minus that's balanced action of dilute hydrochloric acid okay we know what happens when it reacts with sulfites it gives us chloride that is the metallic chloride so here it is magnesium so magnesium chloride would be formed now we have to take care that the product the chloride which is formed its formula is correct so it would be mgcl2 because see here here mg is in plus 2 okay plus 2 charge right so plus 2 needs two chloride ions so 2 minus 2 plus right so mgcl2 mgcl2 and then water and sulfur dioxide gas is released so water and sulfur dioxide gas is released now the thing last thing which remains is just to balance the reaction that's it okay okay coming to the last question state one relevant observation so you have to just give one relevant observation now this type of questions we have solved a lot in so many chapters as well previously so what for what we have to state an observation lead nitrate solution okay lead nitrate okay lead nitrate solution is mixed with dilute hydrochloric acid now hydrochloric acid dilute now just now we have studied and then they are asking us see and heated also okay so don't just read the react don't just read the sentence half sentence of the question get excited get happy and then just jump on the answer directly read the complete question be calm and then answer okay otherwise you would end up writing wrong answers so what would happen once we make them react we know lead chloride is formed and nitric acid is formed right lead chloride sorry pbcl2 and nitric acid is formed okay you can balance the reaction this lead chloride precipitate is formed just now we have seen but what they have asked and heated so after heating we know it dissolves simply so you have to just write the observation they haven't asked you the reaction i have just i have just written this reaction in order to make you understand 
so what would be the observation simply lead chloride precipitate is formed okay but we don't write the name of the precipitate because we don't observe with our eyes that the precipitate is lead chloride okay how you could see okay by looking at the precipitate that it is of lead chloride whether it is written on the precipitate i am lead chloride no you can observe the color you can observe some other physical property so here we know lead chloride color is white right so you would observe white precipitate okay before heating and once it is once once heating is done okay for that reaction that precipitate you would observe it is getting dissolved right so that would be the observation so i would erase it white precipitate is formed correct lead chloride which dissolves on heating okay okay so with this we have reached the end of this video we have completed this chapter we have studied the entire concepts of this chapter okay hydrogen chloride so i hope you would have enjoyed learning with me you would have understood all the concepts which we have which we have learned in this chapter but please let me know but but please do let me know this thing in the comment section that in which thing you are facing difficulties or you whether you enjoyed whether you like the video okay whether you have understood the things most important and as as you all know learn or matlab free hai par best hai so stay tuned keep studying we will see in the next chapter with the next video till then bye bye and have a great day